Next, we have all our data plotted out, but as you can see, this isn't really user-friendly yet. It kind of does a basic job, but it doesn't really stand out. And I have an example of this that I think brings the point home. I can't tell you how many times I've seen students stop here. And Word offers you so much more to make your charts and tables much more usable and readable for your audience. For instance, look at this one. This person spent a good deal of time making up these charts and graphs and did a really good job at it. But all the information kind of blends together. And so let's see what you could do to change that. Now here, through the magic of video, you can see now all of a sudden we have contrast in the axes here and here, like in the in the Gantt chart, we can see that this is the week schedule. These are the tasks. And here in the budget, we can see that this is the heading, supply and cost. And here we have a total bar. Okay. And just something little like that can really make a difference. So something for you to consider. And as you'll see in a second, it takes about just a few seconds. So let's see how to do that. Now, as you've seen with the shading here, this is all that you pretty much have to do. Go in and highlight what you want shaded. And again, once we get into table tools, we can either go into design or layout. Shading will be the design. So we'll go in there. Now, usually you want to think about how you want to shade things. You know, you want to contrast the, you know, the things that are most important so you just want to give it a little bit of thought. Basically, if we go in here and we highlight the lesson row here, and then we go into shading, and I'm going to pick something a little bit dark here. See how that just draws that right out? And now to separate that, I could put tasks in the same color, but see how that kind of runs everything together? It's okay, but it, it kind of actually doesn't contrast the two. It, it places the two axes sort of together in a way that doesn't distinguish them or separate them from one another. So you could either go with a different shade. I'm going to go a little bit lighter. I'm going to try to go light in a way that's different than I'll go with that one. Go try, to, try to go light in a way that, that makes these different as well. Now if you don't like that, I mean you can go through and mess around with this and and choose to change your shading too. For instance, what if you did something like that? Be bold, young writers, young designers, young communicators. So see that that kind of stands out as well. Okay. Uh, there's other things that that you can do here. Suppose you don't like these lines in here. You can also go in and if you want to take two cells, you can go into layout and here they have, by the way, here's where you can insert more as well. Insert above, insert below, insert left, insert right. So you can add there or you can delete a bunch here. Okay. But you can also here, you can split the table, you can merge cells here or you can split cells. Here I'm going to merge cells, and do you see how that takes those cells in the same time frame and puts them together? Makes that table look a little nicer, doesn't it? Or maybe not. <laughs> you can decide. You could also go down through here, and you can do all kinds of things. Like, for instance, you can, you can get rid of different grid lines and so on. You have to watch doing that though. Sometimes what happens is you end up making things less usable by taking out some guides. So here I'm taking a risk if I take out some of those things. Same thing applies down here. It's very easy to go in there and to just go into design and hit some prefab table style or just select some shading out of the blue. Okay, and and with this, suppose I, I mean, I can resize this. Usually, if I find that little box, the arrow, I make it. I mean, I can really resize this. 
you can take these tables and do all kinds of things and if you if you find it you can move it around okay you can also go in here don't forget and you can go back into your home screen and mess around with your font you can increase the font size here that might play a little havoc with us you could change the font too okay. you get the idea there are there are so many things that that you can you can play with with this um, if if you want to for instance if you go into these borders there's all kinds of you can you can take the the borders out see I just took the outside border out or you could put the borders back in you can you can go and you know like mess around with with what what size the borders are and all sorts of things now the last thing that that I do want to show you here with with this would be some of the default things here you can go up here and they do have these default styles if you noticed it just wiped out everything that we did so if you're going to use one of these you do want to do it early but they have these default table templates that you can put in there. You see, they, they do have some that are pretty nice. And so if you click on something like that, you can put a pretty nice table in there. And then you can go in there and put your shading in afterwards. But you have to do it afterwards. And then if you mess around with it enough, you can get most of your features back one more final thing the other thing that you can do is you can go to the illustration toolbar here and you can actually go in if you so desire and insert a picture to modify it greatly but you could insert a picture into one of these cells as well now of course anything within reason but there's also things where you can put shapes in here sometimes people like to put an arrow or something the problem with arrows in a Gantt chart is that it kind of looks like it's continuing the task on in the future and so it gets a little bit confusing but I have seen people do them pretty successfully but there's other types of things that you can put in there and you never know if you need a shape somewhere what kind of project the big thing that I want you to take away from this is that word does offer you many many options for you to do things now the other thing that I would leave you with is that when you go and utilize these things into your more formal reports you will also want to utilize the references tool and insert captions underneath these which we'll take a look at at a future date but these will act just like any other visual and want to attach subheadings underneath them so that you can auto generate a list of illustrations but that I'll save for another day. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you do want to create these in a separate document, which sometimes people do, they like to keep these separate so that they can, you know, create them on one document and save that document and then just paste these in there. You can always go in here and like if I go in and copy this, I can go right into another document, say this one. and paste it right in there 
and it looks like it it just belongs there doesn't it and once it's in there i can modify it however i so desire but that that way you can kind of keep a separate file of that and modify it as you will and then that way that makes sense for some people depending on how you work as a writer anyway I hope this was helpful, and good luck on your proposals. If you're at this point, it means that you're getting close. Have a good one.